So Neil Blomkamp is going to be directing the new Alien movie, which is a prospect that allows for many glorious opportunities to fail, but also many glorious opportunities to make an absolutely amazing Alien movie. But I believe it's possible. I believe in this franchise. I believe there's still a lot more that they can cover. And I also kind of think that Neil Blomkamp could turn out a really good Alien movie. So let's break it down. Obviously the first thing to do in any movie franchise is to pick the tone. And for the Alien franchise, there is only really two tones that actually work. Thriller and action. And that's it. You have to pick one of them. It's perfectly fine to have a few jokes here and there, but don't try to turn it into a comedy and don't try to turn it into a sci-fi philosophy because the Prometheus movies have already got that covered. That is assuming that they ever get their act together and make Prometheus 2. But a new Alien movie must be either a suspenseful, nail-biting, edge-of-your-seat thrill ride like the first movie was, or a testosterone fueled action movie like the second movie was. Those are your choices. This is something that the next two movies after it were aware of, with Alien 3 trying to go back to the classic horror style of the first one and Alien Resurrection going for the James Cameron tone of fun action. So if those are the only two tones that work with this brand, which one do we go with? Well despite all the nostalgia that I have for the 90s action movies, I would suggest that going for a more subtle, suspenseful and intelligent scary tone is the way to go. And here's why I think that. A while back a video game came out called Aliens Colonial Marines, which basically put you in the shoes of the marines from the second movie and it was underwhelming to say the least but fairly recently another video game came out called alien isolation which is as far away from the shoot 'em up game as you can possibly get it's all about stealth and suspense and it will scare the pants off you the raging success of that game indicates to me that audiences are ready for a good, smart, scary alien movie again. More in line with the first one than the second. On top of that, recently a horror movie came out called The Babadook, which I haven't seen, I'm waiting for it to come out on DVD. But all the reviews for that have praised the movie for its lack of cheap scares like the jump scare. It seems that with that movie it's all psychological, like the old Hitchcock film. It's scary because it messes with your head. People are sick of dumb horror movies. We want smart horror again that can scare us really bad like the first movie did. And the original Alien terrified audiences. Let's go back to that. People are ready for it. That's what we want in our Alien movie again. This of course is a huge concern though as the director chosen for this new installment is Neil Blomkamp who so far has never made a movie like that before in his entire career. But I have a special section for Neil Blomkamp at the end of this video. So now let's move on. A big reason why the original movie was so scary is that the alien truly was alien. It was a creature that was completely foreign to audiences. Nobody knew what to expect and nobody expected the xenomorph to come bursting out of John Hurt's chest during breakfast. That fear of the unknown made this terrifying. Today, however, aliens are not foreign to us at all. We already know everything about them. We know their whole life cycle. The queen lays the eggs, the eggs make the facehuggers, the facehuggers latch onto a host to make a xenomorph, who then protects the queen in laying more eggs. We know it all, so there's no longer any fear of the unknown with the xenomorphs. We need to introduce a new element to the aliens to make them unpredictable so that we have no idea what's going to happen next, because that's scary. And by new element, I'm not talking about throwing in predators or engineers or any of that stuff. So with the new Alien movie, how then can we bring in that fear of the unknown element but without losing what makes it an Alien movie? Well, I think the solution for that particular problem can be found in James Cameron's Alien. True, that was an action movie, but it still included an unknown element, that being the Queen. from her, you bitch!
A number of times in that movie, characters talk about who's laying the eggs for these facehuggers. They make mention of a queen, like with insect hives. And in the back of our heads, we're wondering about this queen as well. What's she like? What's she look like? See, that's the unknown element, so that when Ripley walks right into the nest, and we finally do get to see the queen, the tension in the air is so thick, you could wrap it in chicken wire and poke it with a stick. It's awesome. Fear of the Unknown was an important element in both the first and the second movie, and we need that again. Now, regulars to my channel know that in these type of videos, I always try to come up with like a premise to present. That's kind of difficult for this particular movie, since as of the time of recording this, we don't yet know what kind of movie this is going to be. Whether it's going to be a sequel to Resurrection, whether it's set between the first and the second movie, or the second and the third, or whether we're just erasing the latter movies from the franchise. We don't know yet. But regardless, I've got three different ideas that should work regardless of which option they decide to go with. As we know, the aliens need a host for a xenomorph to be born. But what if there was a certain strand of alien that had like a genetic mutation, kind of like a freak of nature, that allowed the facehugger to use as a host another xenomorph? What kind of creature would be born out of that? Would it be some kind of super xenomorph? Or would it be like a xeno facehugger hybrid? Or would it be something else entirely? I don't know, but one thing's for sure, it would be a way of making the aliens alien again. But without removing the elements that made them what they were. This one is my personal favorite. If we were to look at how the aliens were presented in the first two movies, that is before Prometheus came along, which I have a whole other video about, so I won't bother talking about that now. But the way it looks in the first two movies is that the aliens are a species of parasites that kind of jump from planet to planet, stowing away in ships, waiting in hibernation to be discovered, or even just floating through space until they run into something. They're constantly searching for hosts in order to continue their life cycle. That's the life of a parasite. However, in nature, there is another option. Sometimes you get two different species that are able to service each other's needs so that they form a symbiotic relationship. The little fish that cleans the teeth of the shark and removes barnacles off their skin, and in return the shark keeps them safe from other predators. Bees that feed on the nectar of flowers, and in return that allows pollination between the flowers. Even us humans, we're in a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria in our stomachs that digests our food for us. So what if the aliens came across another species that was able to form a similar symbiotic relationship? Perhaps like the acacia ants of Africa. The swollen thorn acacia and its namesake, the acacia ant, have developed harmonious roles in each other's lives. The ant's role is as protector. This relatively huge grasshopper may think it's gonna take a few bites out of the non-poisonous acacia, but the ants take a few bites out of it instead. In exchange for all this protection, the tree takes on the provider role. It gives the insect everything it needs in terms of food and shelter. These little nodules, or nectaries, secrete a sweet nectar for the adult ants to eat. And these brownish pods at the end of some leaves are the perfect, nutrient-packed food for the ants developing young, called larvae. The acacia ant larvae live down hollowed out thorns at the base of the acacia leaves. I could see the xenomorphs protecting like a giant alien tree in a similar kind of way. Maybe it grows pods in which the xenomorphs can grow rather than inside a host. With something like that, the xenos could then actually have a home planet rather than having to be scattered across the galaxy in an endless search for hosts all the time. And I'll tell you what else, we know that the xenomorphs are intelligent. They cut the power. What do you mean they cut the power? How could they cut the power, man? They're animals. I watched it too with trackers checking the corridors. Move! But they don't have much time to use that intelligence for anything other than finding hosts 
or else they'll go extinct. But if they don't need to worry about finding hosts anymore, thanks to the symbiotic arrangement, then they could actually develop that intelligence to rival even humans, which would make them even more dangerous than they already are. Okay, last option. If nothing else, let's change the setting of the movie. We've seen people doing battle with xenomorphs on spaceships, on colonies and whatnot, and that's fine because it's about like being trapped with a monster where there's like nowhere to run. It's good, but we've seen all that stuff before. How about we have our characters land on a planet that is completely controlled by the xenomorphs, like our option two choice, or that is in the process of being taken over by the xenos? The Na'vi of Pandora are being attacked by xenomorphs, and Ripley's ship crashes right in the middle of all that, and now they have to escape. I don't know, look, these are probably some of the dumbest ideas ever, but the point is, somewhere out there there's an idea that isn't dumb, and the movie makers need to find it. A new alien movie needs to offer something that is new, and something that is a meaningful expansion of the franchise, not just more of the same. You know, I meant what I said at the start of the video, that I believe in Neil Blomkamp and I believe that he can make a fantastic Alien movie. His style fits perfectly into the Alien franchise. The previous movies that he has made look like they already could exist in the same universe as Alien. So he's a great choice from that regard. But there's just one thing. Neil Blomkamp, please, don't write the script yourself. All right, here's the thing. Blomkamp has written all of his previous movies, and all of his previous movies are the exact same story every time. There's an evil corporation run by a snobby corporate dude who wants to get a hold of some kind of advanced technology. He has thug-like mercenaries to bully people, and the underdog main character always gets that technology to stick it to the man. And Shelto Copley is always in it, which is a good thing because he's an awesome actor. But everything is always the same. All his movies are the same. If Neil Blomkamp decides to write this script for himself, then we already know exactly what the movie is going to be about, so we don't even need to see it. Evil Corporation, Waylon Utani, led by a snobby corporate guy who's probably going to be played by Shalto Copley, is after advanced xenomorph alien technology. He sends some mercenary thugs out to get it, and the underdog Ripley will end up using the xenomorph technology to stick it to the man. Hell, the concept art that he has already released shows the underdog Ripley wearing the xenomorph suit. Really? You're gonna tell the exact same story for the fourth time in a row? Blomkamp, you're better than that, man. You are better than that. I'm sure that you can afford to like hire some writers to do the script for you. You know, why don't you hire the people who wrote Rise of the Planet of the Apes? They know how to breathe new life into an old franchise. That movie is probably one of the best remakes of the last 10 years. Maybe you can bring in some of the people who made the Babadook to help give it like a scary psychological edge and you combine all of that stuff with your particular visual style and I believe you could make one of the best alien movies ever. Maybe one that's even better than the first two, but not if you try to write the script yourself. I believe in you, Neil Blomkamp. I do. Don't let us down. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I would absolutely love to hear what kind of an alien movie you guys would like to see. Put it in the comments below and let me know. I am Bandit, this is Bandit Incorporated, and until next time, I will see you guys in the comments. So we're getting a new Indiana Jones, played by one of the best possible actors you could ever hope for to play Indiana Jones. Unless we were able to like jump in a DeLorean and go back in time and get like the young version of Harrison Ford and then bring him forward into today. But he would probably then run into like old grumpy Harrison Ford, which would result in some kind of showdown between old Harrison Ford versus young Harrison Ford, which is actually a great idea. I've been waiting for you. But either way, Chris Pratt is perfect for Indiana Jones.